y'all, Juliana from Alabama here, and it is high time that this pasture potato get back to work. Hey, donkey donk. Sadly, summer is drawing to a close, and I am running out of daylight, so let's do a little bit of a talk and walk, shall we? Walk and talk, whatever. I'm just gonna walk with you guys and chat your ear off for a minute while I go capture the hippopotamus. If you did not know this about Buck and myself, we are what you would call a little bit of a good doer. Ooh, sorry, I had to open a couple of gates and it was hard to uh, walk, talk, and open gates at the same time. So anyway, like I was saying, Buck is a good doer and he, on a regular basis, is a bit of a chunky monkey. But during quarantine, I was not riding very often because I had just graduated from CRNA school. I had to take my boards. Hey, Comet, would you like an apple? He says, yes, yes, I would. I had to take my boards, and then I sold a farm and bought a farm, and then I started hey, Buckaroo, a brand new career. So as you can tell, Buck got a little bit neglected on the staying in shape front. So it's been a good, nice, long quarantine for Buck. I'm actually going to catch both the horses. Oh, sorry, I suck at this. Good boy. You're a good boy. So anywho, me and Buck both kind of gained the quarantine 15 and then some. So it is high time we both start getting back into shape. Yes, I know. Not your favorite, but we need to. And I thought, what better time to get back in shape than to do a five mile hack for charity. Hey guys, just wanted to hop on here really quick to show you Comet. If you saw in the background, he was a little bit ribby and I just wanted to show you on a nasty, gross, wet, rainy day, he has now put his weight back on. This would be the kind of day that you'd be able to see every rib in his body, but he's looking really good. He did get a little stressed out with the move and he has lost several teeth. Uh, he is old, he's close to 30. But we've increased his food intake and I think now that he's settled in the new home, he is happy and healthy. So I didn't want you to think that poor Comet was wasting away. Don't worry, we love our dear sweet old boy and he's looking great. He just, We'll always have this kind of top line now since he is so old and we don't really ride him or exercise him anymore because he does have some arthritic knees and he just, he's too old to carry weight anymore. So he's just living his best life as a pasture potato with the chickens. Look how big the chickens are. There's the ducks. Look how big they are. I was nominated by the very gracious and phenomenal Tina Wallace at Life on the Left Rain to participate in the Brooke Charity hashtag five hack. I'm gonna get them up to where I groom and tack up and I'll talk to you a little bit about what the Brooke Charity is. I'm just giving back a quick groom before we go on our little mini hackathon for Brooke Charity. Oh, is that your favorite scratchy spot? I better make sure I hit all of his scratchy spots that he can't reach. Oh, he is a good boy. If you don't know what Brooke Charity is, I encourage you to go on this Esme's YouTube. I will link the actual YouTube video down below where she actually goes and visits with Brooke Charity. Oh, sleepy boy. And uh, explains what all Brooke Charity is and how you can help. But basically, Brooke Charity is a nonprofit foundation that provides veterinary services and education to people in third world countries that still use horses and donkeys as working class members of their own family. So it's a great charity. If you can donate anything, whether it be $1 or $100, anything in between or even higher, they'd greatly appreciate it as it does help not only your equine pals, but also their human counterparts that need them to survive. So me and Bucky here are gonna do their uh, five hack, hack for five. I'm not sure exactly what they're calling it, but it's where you, <laughs> I think Buck would just like to sit here and let me scratch all his itchy spots. But it's where you hack for five miles, donate five pounds, which I'm in the US, I'm not sure what five pounds equates to in US dollars. 
but I'm gonna donate 25 US dollars and we probably actually should go for 25 miles but we're just gonna do a two and a half mile hack today and a two and a half mile hack tomorrow and then you encourage five of your friends to also participate. This video will probably go live after the hackathon is already over, but you can always go on the Brick Charity website and donate whatever you can. I'm gonna finish getting this tubba bubba ready and then we'll talk about how we're gonna get him back into eventing shape. There are many ways that you can bring your horse back into work after having a few months off. This is not the only way, but it is the best way that worked for me and my horse. Like I said, Buck had almost six months off from any serious ridden or arena type work. So before I started back into a regular routine, I spent two weeks just walking straight lines. I mapped out a two and a half mile hack along my quiet country road. If you don't have a road that is safe enough to hack on, you could also map out two to three miles in a field or around your property. You don't have to ride it, you could also hand walk it like Blake is doing with Comet. Walking is often a very underutilized activity, and it is a great way for your horse to start tracking up with his hind end and engaging and conditioning his core before asking for more difficult maneuvers. You have to be careful walking on roads as horses can slip on asphalt, which is why I had these road studs installed into Buck's shoes. Walking on asphalt short distances is beneficial as you can see Buck actually engaging his core, picking his feet up, and tracking into his front footsteps as opposed to when he is on grass. You can tell it is just not as engaging. This is an easy activity to do on a daily basis even when like you're short on time. I could pull him out of the pasture, groom him a little, and hand walk him two and a half miles in less than an hour. So it's a great way to get both of you back into a regular routine. Lucky enough to live close to this big hill, even though Buck may not agree, but incorporating hill work into your walking work is such a great way to get your horse to start engaging his haunches, building that top line muscle, really tracking up and forward. If you can get them into a nice forward walk, which is kind of a struggle sometimes going up the hill with the buck. Hill work is such a great conditioning tool for your horse and yourself if you choose to walk alongside with them. And I don't recommend doing this with this steep of an incline, but if you have just kind of a nice yeah. gradual Good incline job. in your field, Backing horses up hills is another phenomenal way to have them engage their core, build their top line, and really uh, condition their haunches. You can just see Buck's muscles really working here coming up the hill. You just have to be patient with it as it is a very difficult activity for them to do. When I first started doing it with Buck, he would kind of like sidestep and not back straight up. So you want them to really actually back straight up and follow the tracks of their hind feet with their front feet and not kind of step sideways. So just start with short little steps, just a couple steps at a time, and then build up to actually getting them all the way up the hill. So it might just be several small little sessions before they figure out how to do that and then get the musculature that they can do that. Oh, this is getting long winded, sorry. but. Now that we've done all of our walking work, I spent about two weeks, like I said, walking. Then I started doing some groundwork. And in my personal opinion, long lining is better than using just side reins. I don't really have much of an issue with side reins, but I feel like long lining, it really encourages them, blah, if I can talk, it really encourages them to step up and under with their hind feet as you can see buck is kind of tracking into his front footsteps which has always been such a struggle for us is to engage his hind end step up and under and kind of develop those core muscles and i feel like long lining just encourages them to do that more so than just lunging on side reins i'm not going to give you guys a tutorial on long, on long lining as i do it a little differently than most people do as you can see, when I asked them to change direction, I actually changed the position of myself because I don't want to yank on their outside rein to have them turn around. And I also don't want them to kind of get used to turning their hind end to me anyway. So I just simply asked them to stop and then I change direction myself and continue forward from there. A lot of people don't do it that way. That's just my personal preference. And I also just let my lines hang loose like you see here. A lot of people will tell you to um, bundle them up in your hands. I just get too confused with that. I feel like I can't control it well enough. And this is also kind of a sensitizing exercise as it kind of desensitizes the horse to things running alongside him on the ground that he might spook at, like 
that right there. Uh, I'm not sure how much of that was a spook and how much of it was Ted running towards him, but I just stayed calm, cool, and collected, didn't make a big deal out of it. Let him kind of spook, yes, whatever scared you was scary, but it's not a big deal and we're gonna move on and that's how I always handle a spooky horse. So that's another reason I like to just kind of let my lines dangle is I won't get tangled up in it, the horse won't get tangled up in it as it's just a line on the ground and it's kind of a desensitizing exercise. Huh. Anyway, so I continued a long line and when I ask for a trot when I long line, I kind of like to trot along with them as I feel that horses kind of feed off your own energy. So if you're just standing still and lunging them around you, it's going to be a lot more difficult to get impulsion and energy from your horse. If you kind of pick up your own feet and amp up your energy, they will tend to kind of match that energy. So I usually work harder than most people do when they long line. But again, this is just kind of my personal preference and how I feel it benefits the horse's movement. As you can see, Buck's really starting to kind of track up, use his hind end, engage his core, kind of lower his head. I want him to get kind of long and low, raise his back lift his abdominales and really track under with his hind end which is kind of what we are achieving and dodge the dog at the same time and i also like to kind of just set out poles and let them go over poles just one pole at a time i don't make it too complicated as every time a horse steps over a pole they do have to engage their core it's kind of like the horse's version of doing a crunch and i know i can't do too many crunches in a row so i'm not going to ask that of my horse when he is out of shape now that I've done about two weeks of just straight walking and then another couple weeks of just incorporating a little bit of groundwork in there, I'm going to start getting back into a regular riding routine. And straight off the bat, I want my horse to start getting impulsion from his hind end. I want him to step under with his hind end. I want him to lift his core and work over his top line. And a great way to do that when you first get on is have your horse back up two to three steps straight back and then ask them to move off at a marching walk from that back up. You don't want him to do a piddly little walk. You want him to march and really step under with his hind end. Then just start incorporating trot pulls, lots of transitions between walking and trotting. You're not going to be able to get your horse into a nice uphill frame. You actually want him to be kind of long and low. I just want forward rhythmical motion. I'm not looking for him to be on the bit. I'm just looking for him to just use his hind end and give me nice marching rhythmical motion to develop that top line muscle. And you're not going to do a lot of turning exercises, but one great exercise to do at the walk is this M shape with your poles. So make an M with your poles and then get zigzag back and forth through them. And what I'm looking for is him not to lose impulsion through the turn. So it is a little bit of a tight turn, but I want him to not lose the momentum coming through the turn. And then you can incorporate a few of these like turning walks on the haunches. So that kind of loosens them up side to side. And again, I just want marching forward off of that turning walk on the haunch. So every week, you just kind of increase the intensity and the length of your rides and just start adding in different exercises and you'll just start getting into a better routine. I'm not going to give you any more exercises to do as each program is specific to horse rider and discipline, but this is just kind of the overall basis of how I'm getting my horse back into a schedule after having several months off. I will say one thing that I don't do and I don't recommend is any type of canter work in these beginning stages as I feel like canter work should be a more uphill gait and right now you're really trying to develop his top line and his haunches and the musculature to do that type of work so long and low is really the way to go with that don't forget to make it fun don't constantly drill your horse over and over again add in some days where you do some obstacles or i don't know play around with things that you drag on the ground you can do all kinds of games and fun things with your horse to keep them motivated keep them wanting to work 
and you don't have to use a treat bag and a clicker for them to want to be around you. Oftentimes when I get done riding Buck, he actually follows me all around. Here's a clip of him following Blake all around. No treats were involved at all. We just use a lot of praise, a lot of reward, and we make things fun and entertaining and motivating for the horse and they'll want to be with you. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Comment down below. Let me know what you guys are doing with your horses right now, what you enjoyed most about the video. And if you haven't done so already, please do subscribe. I can tell who is and who isn't subscribed. And you guys watching my content that aren't subscribed, shame on you. And I'm just kidding. But if you do enjoy the content, I really hope you do subscribe. I love you, mean it, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.